Welcome to Gary Clark Tech and the beginning of a new series in which we're going to use the Symfony framework in order to build a microservice. Now microservices are becoming more popular and they've been made more possible by advances in technology and the availability of tools such as Amazon Web Services, cloud computing tools which enable you to have a network of loosely coupled services which are able to communicate with each other. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. And so that's what we're going to build in this one. But first off, let's have a look at what microservices are and how they can benefit us. The application which you see on your screen is built using monolithic architecture, which means that it is a single tiered application where everything is contained in a single repo hosted on a single platform. The benefits of this approach are that it is a simple architecture, it's simple to develop, simple to deploy, and can easily scale horizontally by running multiple copies behind a load balancer. There are, however, several downsides to this approach, which are very real, and I've actually witnessed every single one of these downsides. Large monolithic code bases, they can be intimidating to developers, and the application can be difficult to understand and modify. And so the code ends up throwing up as many problems as it actually solves, and it becomes more difficult to change things. And as a result, the quality of the code declines over time. Continuous deployment is difficult because a large monolithic application is an obstacle to frequent deployments. Scaling can be difficult because you can't scale components independently so you have that interdependence which becomes a real problem in this respect and also that interdependence becomes a problem to development itself because it makes it more difficult to create teams which have focused responsibility for certain components and modules and work independently. You now have more inter-team dependencies which need to be coordinated. And probably the biggest problem I've encountered is that you can end up with a tech stack which you can't update. You might have an old version of PHP or an old version of a framework like Symfony which is no longer supported or maintained. And you could be faced with the prospect of having to rewrite the entire application in order to upgrade. So many companies fall into this trap. So let's have a look at the solution and that is microservices in which your application is composed of a set of loosely coupled collaborating services. In this type of architecture each service is easy to maintain and test, it is loosely coupled and it can be worked on and deployed independently. There are many benefits to this approach and some of these are maintainability because it's a more manageable size, it makes them easier to understand and to change. Services are smaller and easier to test. They can be deployed independently and you can organize development around multiple autonomous teams so your teams don't have to uh, rely on each other like they do with the big monolithic applications. You can choose your tech stack without being constrained by the rest of the application and you can also upgrade your technology a lot more easier or upgrade your tech stack a lot more easier than what you can do with the monolithic application and you can also isolate faults without them bringing down the entire application. The microservices approach does have its drawbacks. It's not the perfect solution for everything. Some of those drawbacks are you have to deal with additional complexity of a distributed system. Developers need to implement the inter-service communication and know how to deal with failures. So you'll find that devs tend to need to understand a lot more than they did previously when monolithic architecture was more the norm in PHP. Uh, testing interaction between services can be difficult and it, the increased deployment complexity can also pose problems. And so there you have the differences between the two systems and some of the benefits and drawbacks between using each. In this one, we're not going to be creating an entire uh, networked set of microservices. We're going to focus on one single microservice. We're going to be using the Symfony framework. And so we'll be considering some of the components we can use in Symfony, as well as thinking about our service and how it interacts with the outside world. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.